Hi everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to be doing a full face of Sephora favorites. So all of these products you can get at Sephora. I went through my collection and picked out a bunch of things that I love, like very, very top, top favorites in my makeup collection. And I tried to focus on brands that you can only get at Sephora, unless you get it from the brand's website, obviously. But I picked out a bunch of my favorite things and I figured we could do our makeup together today and use them. If you're new here, my name is Blair. I do all kinds of beauty content here on YouTube. So I hope you'll subscribe if you have not already. And let's just get started. All right, I have already done my skincare and my SPF. I did pull out a primer. This primer I love, and you can get it at Sephora. This is the Iconic London Underglow Blurring Primer. This is a really nice hydrating, slightly glowy, a little bit blurring. It does a little bit of everything for me. So that's why I picked this one. And it does have a dropper, which I'm not like the biggest fan of, but it's okay. So I'm going to just use my hands to apply this. This is a really, really nice primer. It gives just a little bit of glow, some hydration, and it just kind of gives your skin a nice even canvas before you go in with makeup. I will say it's not the most blurring primer that I own by any means. They do call it a blurring primer, but if you're looking for like extreme blurring for under your makeup, I would not direct you to this one. This one just kind of does a little bit of everything in my opinion, but it's a great base for makeup. All right, I let the primer sit for like two or three minutes. And normally I would do corrector next, but I'm actually gonna go in with foundation. I wanna do corrector a little bit differently than I usually do it. So we're gonna go in with foundation. And the one that I pulled out is this one. This is the Patrick Ta Major Skin Foundation. I have been a big fan of this since he released it. I absolutely love it. I love a cream foundation. And this shade for me can be too dark typically if I am fair, but I did just apply some self tanner, so it should be an okay match for me now. I haven't even rinsed it off yet, so I'm marinating in it right now, but I figured we could use this today because it should be a pretty good match for me now that I have a little bit more color in my skin. And I'm gonna use actually the Patrick Ta face brush. This is the face two foundation brush, but I'm gonna use the more dense side and start applying this. I love this foundation. The key with it for sure is to not apply too much because it is a cream. You, If you go in really heavy with it, it can look heavy. So you do have to apply it kind of sparingly, but because it's a cream formula, it looks like skin. It gives your skin the same kind of skin-like effect as a cream blush or a cream bronzer, which I love. And yeah, so this with self-tan is a good shade for me. This is shade light number three. Um, and yeah, I actually really like applying this with his foundation brush also, but you can obviously use whatever you have, but I do like this brush. And this is a really nice buildable coverage with this foundation, so you can build it up or you can leave it really sheer and get a lighter coverage also. But the, the key with this is number one, applying it sparingly, and number two, really prepping and hydrating your skin underneath, just like you would if you used a cream corrector or a cream concealer under your eyes. You don't want to go in with a cream foundation on dry skin, because that's not gonna, it's not gonna look good. But if you prep really well and just apply as much as you need or you want, 
I think it's beautiful. All right, so here it is blended all over. Ignore the under eyes because I don't bring my foundation up there. But I mean, this is such a pretty foundation. It looks like skin. It looks like skin. It's beautiful. Beautiful. Okay, for corrector, there's two that I really wanted to use, but I figured we would use this one. I love this one from Huda Beauty. This is the Faux Filter Color Corrector in Cherry Blossom. I also love the new one from Cali Ray, but I've been using that almost daily at this point, so I figured we could use something different. But I've really been liking applying my corrector and concealer like this lately. So I will take the corrector like this and just kind of focus it where I have majority of my darkness. And then I will use my concealer before I even blend it in. So I'm gonna use this one. This is the House Labs Concealer. As if you know my videos and you know me, you know I love the Natasha Denona Concealer. I have it sitting right here but I also really love this one from House Labs. So I wanted to use this one today because this is House Labs you get at Sephora. So we're gonna go in with this and I have this shade number 12 and I also have shade 13 that we'll use in a minute, but this is shade 12. It's a little bit more of a pinky undertone and then shade 13 matches my skin a little bit better. So I'm going to add just a little bit where I want a little more coverage on my face. And, okay, then I like to let it sit for a minute before I blend. So I'm going to start with the Patrick Ta foundation brush again. And I'm just going to blend these smaller areas kind of in the center of my face. And then I'm gonna switch to my FO3 from Sigma. And what I've been doing is basically blending the corrector into the concealer. I usually apply the corrector first and then go on top of it with my concealer. But for whatever reason, uh, since I got the Cali Ray corrector, I just started trying that one day and I really, really enjoyed it. You can definitely do it the other way too where you just apply the corrector then add concealer on top that's probably the most common way to do it but I don't know I've really been liking mixing them together as I blend I love the house labs concealer also in comparison to Natasha Denona house labs is more hydrating it's a little bit of a thicker formula but it has more moisture, more hydration. The Natasha Denona is a thinner formula. It has a bit more coverage and it's a little more matte once it sets down than the House Labs. But I love them both and I recommend both. Just depends on you and what you like. I don't know what it is. I just really been loving blending the corrector in with my concealer all in one step. So if you have a corrector at home and you've never tried that, maybe give it a try. See what you think. All right, for a cream bronzer, I have a bunch obviously that I love, but the one that I've rediscovered in like the last few months is the Fenty Cream Bronzer in the shade Butter Biscuit. This, if you like a truly neutral undertone in a cream bronzer, this is, this has got to be about as neutral as it gets, honestly, in terms of bronzer undertones. It's not too warm, but it's not cool either. It just lands like right in between. And it's also a great formula. The formula is easy. It never looks patchy it always looks good always and i am applying it with the n15 from bk beauty i've been loving using this for cream bronzer lately and this formula also comes in i want to say like 10 shades maybe 
which is great for a bronzer. All right, I am gonna set my face with some powder and I pulled out this one. This is such a great translucent powder, the House Labs Bio Blurring Powder. It's so good, so good, and I feel like it is definitely underrated. I don't hear many people talking about it, but it's a great powder. So I figured we will use this and then we'll go in with blush. I'm gonna set my face a little bit before we do that just to make sure the blush applies evenly. And I also love this blush brush, or not blush brush, I love this powder brush, but unfortunately it is discontinued from Sephora. It's the number 55, which I absolutely love. I don't know why they discontinued it, but I don't think you can get it anymore. And this powder is nice because it sets your makeup, it does blur your skin, but it doesn't make you totally flat with no glow at all. Like you can see, I still have some glow, but it does set your makeup in place really well. And it's talc free, which I know is very important to a lot of people. I love that one. All right, moving on to blush, which is my favorite part. Of course, you know we have to use a Patrick Ta blush. I can't do a Sephora favorites video ever and not talk about these blushes because I love them. We're gonna use this one today, and this is She's Wanted. The reason I wanted to use this shade is, number one, I love it, but number two, I was actually on Instagram yesterday, and I was scrolling I saw Patrick Ta had a, I think it was a reel on Patrick Ta Beauty, and he was saying that this is the shade in his blushes that look good on everybody. He uses this on everybody, and I can see why. I love this shade. It looks very intimidating and very scary, but it is such a beautiful berry tone I love. so. I'm going to use the Patrick Ta blush brush and I am going to use the powder first and he said to get the powder on the brush and then really tap it off on your hand because this color it's bright so it can be pigmented and then he just went in and applied. I don't know what it is, but there's something about this tone of blush that I just love. I, I love it. You just have to be kind of mindful when you're applying it. If you have a lighter skin tone, if you have a deeper skin tone, you don't have to be as careful. And this is, like he said, one of those shades that will look good on everybody, which is amazing and kind of hard to find. But like, look at at the shade. I don't know what it is, but there is just something about this tone. If you are looking for a new brush during the sale for the Patrick Todd blush, or any blushes, but his blush brush is actually very good for his blushes because they were it was made to go with them, but you have the fluffy side here and then this side which is more angled that is meant for the creams, but I will say you can also use this for foundation or for cream bronzer. It's very similar shape to the BK Beauty 101 brush. I don't have mine over here, but it's almost an identical shape to that. So you could really use this brush for a lot of other things, not just the blush. All right, let's do a little bit of the cream now. So I'm gonna flip the brush and get some of it on the brush and then again I'm gonna kind of tap it off on my palm here and just tap. I don't know what it is but I just can't I can't get enough of this shade. I think I actually bought this during the last Sephora sale and I remember thinking, I don't know if I should buy that color, I don't know if that will look good on me, but I'm so happy that I did because it's, it's beautiful and it's not like anything else that I have. 
I mean, look at the shade on the palm of my hand. How pretty is that color? All right, moving on to the brows. Of course, we gotta use this. This is my favorite thing right now for brows. This is the brow powder from Anastasia in the shade medium brown. This is just my go-to right now. I'm setting my brows in place now and I'm using the Rare Beauty Brow Gel. I really like this one. It, I also still like the Benefit 24 Hour Brow Setter. I like this one from Rare Beauty though because it, it sets your brows without making them like hard or crunchy. I like the Benefit one too. All right, moving on to eyes. I did just apply the Rare Beauty Eye Primer. This is a great eye primer. I like it. It has a little bit of color to it, but not a ton. And for the eyes, okay, I have a lot of eye products that I love from Sephora. And I originally picked out my YSL quads to use. So I have the shade 300. I have Stora Dolls, which is 100, and then I also have 400, which is more of a purple pink color story. But I had a change of heart based on the rest of the makeup. I wanna use this again, the Dior Backstage Palette. I bought this about, I don't know, a month or two ago, and I just love this palette. I don't know what it is, but I absolutely love the colors in here. And I feel like these plum shades here would look good with the blush. So I think we're gonna use this. We'll do a little bit of this kind of beigey color right here. The, or this is called beige, the center shade. I'm gonna apply this on the lid first. This is just a really light color. It doesn't give a whole lot of color. It just adds a little bit of something, but I'm going to apply that on the lid. And then I'm going to take this shade here, which this is probably my favorite shade. Maybe not my favorite. Okay. That one and the middle one are my two favorites, but we're going to go in with soft rose, which is this color here. And this is the 212 from BK Beauty. And I'm gonna apply this as my crease color. So they call this a rose. To me, it's kind of like, I would say more of a taupe, but I love it. It's a perfect transition color, especially in this palette. I think it just goes really well with the other shades. So this formula from Dior is definitely on the softer side. So as you can see, you don't get a ton of pigment initially. You can build it up a little bit, but this is definitely more, more soft compared to like a Natasha Denona eyeshadow or a Pat McGrath eyeshadow. This is kind of in between like a Tom Ford eyeshadow and like a Natasha Denona shadow. It's not as soft maybe as Tom Ford, but it's definitely not nearly as pigmented as like a Natasha Denona shadow, which if you're like me and you like soft eye looks, you would love this. I'm gonna take a little bit of the center shade here. This one is called Soft Taupe, so I guess this one they're considering taupe, this they're considering more rosy. But I'm gonna take just a little bit of the Soft Taupe color. Like, I barely touched that shade. And you can see, you do get a good bit of payoff, but I'm basically just adding that over the top of the rose shade. 
just to add some depth there, but look how pretty that color is. This shade is also really pretty like on its own as like a smoky one and done shadow. I love that too. All right, now I'm gonna go into this shade here, which is called Mauve. Love this color and I switched to a 211 from BK Beauty, it's a little bit smaller. And I'm gonna apply this shade just in the outer corner just to get some of that really beautiful mauve plum shade here. If you have green eyes or hazel eyes, this palette is going to be right up your alley because the colors really do just make green pop. All right, I'm actually gonna take this brush. This is an old Smashbox brush. It's called the Tapered Shadow Brush. And I'm gonna go in with a little bit of the light shade. So this, I think it's, what's it called, Pearl. And I am gonna put that shade right here in this inner corner, like where the very corner of my eye is. So like right here just to like brighten up this area. And then I'm gonna take the Deep Plum, which is this shade here, with my 208 brush from BK Beauty. And I'm gonna use this for a shadow wing. And then I'm going to take the shade here again, which is Soft Rose. And I'm just going to put this on the bottom lash line. I'm going to use this Sephora 12 Hour Eyeliner in Tiramisu. And I'm going to apply this in my waterline. The Sephora collection products will be 30% off during the sale. And this is a great eyeliner for the waterline if you're looking for something that will stay. These stay really well for me from Sephora. I'm sure they make a, like a more purple one. I, I just have this one, which is tiramisu. It's just a dark brown. For mascara, we're gonna open a new one of these. This is the YSL Lash Clash Mascara in brown. I've already been through one of these and then I bought a new one during the last Sephora sale and then I got one in PR. So I actually have two backups of this. But we're gonna use this because this is a great mascara. You can get it at Sephora. I love the brown color. And it's great if you are looking for something that gives a lot of volume, a lot of volume. Like this is not a natural mascara by any means. This gives you a lot of oomph to your lashes if that's what you're looking for. The only thing I will say about this that I just like to point out is this mascara does not flake, it does not smudge, it really adheres to your lashes and for that reason it's hard to remove. It's not an easy one to take off so just keep that in mind. If you do buy it, it's a great one, performs well, it gives tons of length, tons of volume, but it is a little bit more difficult to remove. Okay, last for the lips. I pulled out a few different liners, but I think we're gonna use this. This is the Sephora Collection Liner in the shade Sink or Suede. So these are retractable gel liners, but this shade is perfect for my natural lip color. It's a cooler, kind of like a contouring color, but it has like a mauve undertone. So if you have more 
rosy kind of mauvey lips in general. This is a really good lip liner. So you can see it really does match my lips really well. But I also want to use just a little bit of this lip liner. This has been my favorite for so long and I still love it. It's Pat McGrath uh, in the shade Structure. Kind of similar in color. Not quite as cool toned as Sink or Suede. I think I want to use the blush honestly on my lips and then maybe a little bit of a gloss. So I'm going to take the Patrick Ta blush in She's Wanted. So pretty. So pretty. I even applied a little bit much. Um, I forgot how pigmented it is. I'm going to take my sponge and just kind of dab over it. Kind of like use it as a lip stain, but it's so pretty. And then on top of that, I have to use this gloss because this is another product that's been a favorite for a very long time. It's the Dior Maximizer in the shade 38 Nude Rose. So good. This is kind of a warmer rose, I would say. So it kind of counteracts the blue tone of that blush, but it's so pretty. Okay. Last product has to be setting spray and this one is my absolute favorite. If I had to pick one, as you can see, I'm like almost out of it. I also love the Milk Hydro Grip Spray. I have them both sitting right here and you can see I'm almost out of both. But we're gonna use this one today. All right, you guys, that is everything for this video. I love how this makeup turned out. I feel like all these products just go well. The tones go so well together. So I hope you enjoyed. I love all these products. I highly recommend them if you're wanting to shop the sale. But I did also just want to say, keep in mind as you're watching these videos, you're going to start seeing a ton of them in your feed. Just remember that just because you see someone using it or you watch a recommendations video or you know you see all of this Sephora content all the time I know I'm guilty of it too I see it and I it makes me want to shop too so I totally get it just remember that I do this as a job a lot of the people that you see buying a lot of makeup during the sale do do this as a job so just keep that in mind don't feel like because you see other people doing it, you have to go out and do it too. Unless that's really what you want to do, then, you know, knock yourself out, do whatever you want. But I do just want to put that out there always. Just keep that in mind when you're watching and consuming all the Sephora sale content because I get it. I watch it too. I contribute to it. So I did just want to put that out there. But if you are interested in these products, they will be linked in the description box as well as in the YouTube shopping feature that should be in the bottom left corner. That will take you directly to the products, directly to the product page. These are all affiliated links that support me and support my channel. If you use them, I do make a small commission typically. So thank you so much if you do that. It really does make a difference and I just really do appreciate it. So I did wanna say that as well. I think that's everything. If you're new, I hope you'll subscribe and make sure to follow me over on Instagram at simply.flair and TikTok simply.flair1. And I think that's everything. I will see you again very soon for another video. Remember, simply be you.